I just, I can't, I just don't understand how you this big can be so soft spoken. <laughs> This is the nicest guy you ever, I mean, he's like a tennis guy. And you're a shot. Look at the fly. Sean Rubin, do you want to feel this shadow on your back to the whole Olympia? Shadow. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw Big Randy, you know, pro, and uh, he walked over to shake my hand. <laughs> it's like a baseball club. Huh? <laughs> like a bunch of bad ass. You know? And I keep telling him, like, everyone, you know, when he gets it right, hopefully I'm retired. <laughs> like some iron. You know, you might be retired right now, but that's going to be 53. It's still going, man. That's just going to be on the other side. And like, just looking at this guy, it's like, you know, oh my God. You know, I had the opportunity to hang out in Kuwait uh, a couple weeks before the, uh, before the arm, and he was still just so freaking massive that he keeps saying to himself, is he getting on stage? And he got on the stage and guest pose, and he was like, but <laughs> 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 uh, he's the nicest, sweetest guy I ever wanted me to talk to. You know, sometimes you really have to go, what did you, what did you say? <laughs> And just, it's not because of you know, the language barrier. It's just so soft spoken that. For you to say somebody is soft spoken or something, by the way. Thank you. It's like, what did you say? Finally, Sean's got somebody that's even uh, lower than he is in terms of. I'm happy for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Um, the transformation world. And then we finally met, and again, like Sean said, I met the soft spoken, but uh, at the time uh, he was learning English, of course, even though my first language is English, <laughs> from to, yeah, right. to, witness, <laughs> to witness the conversation that took place back then with two interpreters, me and Big Rami, no one smiling, shaking hands, hugging, was pretty funny. But again, five years of training. And then one year ago, the English was like, you guys, I think everybody needs to talk about that. I understand, uh, like I said, Robbie's been busy this year learning the art of uh, the English language. I think he's done a great job. The very first four words he learned was all you can eat. from the champs. We got them all here. Your chance to ask anybody up on the panel any questions you want. Can be the Olympia course or uh, the careers. But I'm all stand up at once. Oh, there we go. Now we got some. Now we got everybody wants us. Peter McGuff. I'm sure you've got a question. The great Peter McGuff, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, the story is Peter is seeing it all. I have a question for Dexter. Dexter, when it was just you and Phil standing there at the end, and the day before you sort of voiced the opinion that maybe Phil couldn't make the correct adjustments, that's something we said about Jay Cutler back in 2008. Right. And he stood alone with Jay at the end, and you were the world's champion. Was there any flashback moments there? What were your feelings when you were standing next to Phil? Was it uh, deja vu? Yeah, it was. I really thought I could can deal with Phil. And, they, and as, you show, as you see, it was real close between us. So next year, it's on. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Melvin Anthony is up here, the marvelous one himself, and uh, Melvin has offered his uh, interpreter skills. I was used to coming here to the press conferences. Uh, what was Fox just saying? Um, he was just saying that I'm just happy to have a baby. I just had to put my arm out and say, give me a secret, I didn't want to talk. So I could take yours. I said, I don't remember everybody came on here, but all this blah, 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 period, uh -uh. I said, I'm going to tell the truth. I said, what it's about? I said, everybody's trying to be everybody. I said, all these guys up here, when they train, they earn it. I said, when you, everybody remember when I come to the press conference, I said, I always say what everybody don't want to say. Sean was talking about the situation about in the gym. He changed his schedule. I said, where do you think there's a burnout from? 
mean? Is it because usually you'll say, you come in the front and say, hey, no, uh, Sean's going to train today, go in and see what you look like. Who you been telling me? I said, I tell this to everything about everybody because I didn't care. I said, I go to every room and speak in and see, feel the glue, watch it. I said, I see you've been over here shortly. We went to Australia, he said, hey, no, uh, I don't know, man, I don't know how I know what you think. I said, you only want to read my mission? He said, yeah, I said, I'll be right back. I said, I go to every room and come back, I said, he look crap like crap, that guy look like crap, you don't need him, but crap, I'm on. I said, you don't need him today. He says, so get your money and run. I said, I'll get it. You lie, but my wife, I said, when I first met Phil, he tell a lie too. I said, he's not back there, he's not going to get you. But because when I first met Phil, I didn't like him. You know why? Because I said, he like flex me. I said, no, he don't, I do. I said, okay, well, guess what? When I see him, I'm going to get him. It didn't happen. He got it every time. I said, it's okay, because after we hung out in Italy, we had a conversation. And the way he told Jay Wood down, my mom, I said, hey man, you know what? I said, you're pretty cool. He said, yeah, man, you're pretty cool too. I said, I don't like you when I met you. He said, I don't like you either. <laughs> I said, he said, that's not true. I said, we said they talk about 20 minutes. And I told him, so I said, man, you're a cool dude, but I like you. I said, I like you too. I said, I don't like being feel like that. <laughs> I said, what you guys saw last night, you guys were tired, everybody, you know, they dehydrate, everybody eats the same food, the females too. I said, that was one of the reasons they called me out, because I haven't been around in five years, and I didn't know how anybody was going to respond. I said, maybe they forgot about me. I said, when I came out here, everybody, my mom made me cry. I said, no, this is right there. I said, what do you mean? When you come back, uh -uh -uh, I like my fried chicken too. I said, y'all remember that door store? I'm still eating on my I said, I'm not putting them in the trash no more. I said, you know, these athletes are very good athletes and they all are in position. You know, and the only thing I want to tell you is that this sport has to continue to survive. And the only way it's going to survive is that everybody can invest on stage. Everybody does the best for you guys. It's not just for them. It's not about the contract. It's not about the money. It's about the love of the sport. And so that's why I'm coming back. I said, I want to teach that. I, I talked to Sean yesterday. I said, because he and Sean are like my brother. I said, he don't talk to people. They can't imagine. He can show everything. I said, so I told him, I said, Sean, you don't know who you are. He said, what do you mean? I said, you're a king and you don't even know it. I said, I can say it now because I'm retired, but before I would tell him nothing, I just keep being in his pocket. I take your shoes and your underwear and everything else. And I go over here talking about, oh man, I just have to be here. And you know, um, you know all the girls like each other. No, they don't. I said, don't tell them now. I said, I got three boys up. Let me tell you something. You and you and you. Put your shoes down and watch what happens. <laughs> you know what I got back and I see them happen. You'll see your draw in a minute. I said, you put your draw in your toe. I said, you come and say, has anybody seen my talk? I don't matter, girl. But you look good today, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they like each other, they really don't. They say, on stage, it's a war. You know, you guys still don't need to see what we see. I'm telling you the other side because I don't care. I'm retired. They can't do nothing to me now. I'm this guy, I'm a physique guy, and I see the guy in the gym here lying who said, if I ever get big, 21 pounds, that's your ass. I'm gonna get you. This one here, you don't have to be so. That's it because we all have a love of this world. But when you get on stage, it's war. They said, it's not like you think. I come and pay my money. Oh, that was nice. But behind the stage, I hate him. I said, I can't wait, but when it's over, we're gonna hang out and get drunk. They said, there's always a responsibility. They're responsible for the IBD. And the IBD is in a corporation. I'll tell you one story and I'm going to leave. Sometimes there's no talking. Like last night was a talk. Bob said, hey, what was he about last night? I said, hmm. Nobody was talking. He said, what do you mean? I said, when we and Dutch used to go at it, hmm. do you know how much crap we was talking on the stage? You have no idea. I said, man, you better get that to know. And you better go on stage before me because if you do, you finish. Because I'm going to shake my ass everywhere on that stage. I'm going to look at a female, I'm going to wink, I'm going to do some quick, I'm going to cheat. Straight off. That's just the way it is. Me and Dexter were going next to each other and said, Okay guys, uh, four turns to the right. Do your pose and get to the back of the bicep. I'll leave you get your ear. You don't keep your ass in the shop. <laughs> this is your plus one, man. F you, not F you. Okay guys, calm down. Calm down. You talk about elbows, man. If I had a gun, I'd shoot him on the stage. Yeah, if I remember, I've been around and said, when the press conference comes, don't say nothing to me. Don't ask me nothing, man. You want to know what's going to happen? I was going to be old. I said, me and Johnny Jackson are over there trying to hide. I said, because he's been
in a long, long time. I said, you got to remember that you got me into it. Because I beat you two weeks before. And he said, no, you know, I beat you before. I said, no, you didn't. He said, well, I'm going to say something. If you do, if you know what's going to happen after that, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. They said, so Bob said, no, no, are you going to say something like that? Uh-uh. I ain't saying nothing. So he goes to Johnny, because he knows Johnny going to say something. He said, hey, Johnny, he said, how do you feel about last week at the Atlanta City Club? Yeah, you remember that? And, and you feel, feel like this. Oh, hell. <laughs> no, I'm about to go crazy. I said, Bob, you know, stop. He said, okay, Johnny. Look, what's going on? Johnny said, back there, me and Johnny are best friends. I mean, we like this. We're on stage. I hate him and he hate me. And I'm telling you right now, that, that show I beat him up, it was close. But you know how I got him? I got him in his head. That's it. <laughs> I wait the last minute. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes, guys. I wait. I take my clothes off last. And I was shredded. He said, oh, shit. <laughs> No, the pass is in. I said, you got to go right. I said, you know who's got to beat this shit? Kick my ass. You finish. And I beat it by two points. So he thinking, okay, I'm going to go to Olympia. He said, I'm ready to use fire up because he's throwing five pounds. He don't know I throw eight pounds. Yeah. And I waited for him to sit in there. I said, well, leave it alone. Leave it alone. But I said, ah, here you go, Tony. I said, okay. Then he said, don't start. I said, I won't start. I'm going to finish it. He said, two weeks ago, I should have beaten up. I said, what did he say that for? I grew 10 more pounds. I said, what you said? He said, give me that mic. I said, if you gauged that body from two weeks ago, you just lost because I'm 10 pounds heavier. I said, you would look if you're going to come out with me. He said, I bet you I will. I said, I bet you you're wrong. I said, okay. Then who got in? Who was this person that got in? Y'all remember that press conference? Eddie Abu. He said, y'all sound like a bunch of bitches. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, you the rest all your life. You better put a little face in your voice before you talk about engaging me. He said, matter of fact, I gotta go take a piece. <laughs> and I walked off the stage. I said, I never missed my call. I said, but I love every one of you guys. I said, I was so happy to see you guys make the call. I said, this is what I'm gonna do. I said, I wanna take each one of you guys at some point, and I wanna help you complete a closing routine. Especially this one. I said, because this one reminded me of me. I said, that robotic that routine, and you do that same routine again, it'd be so nice if you let me. But I love everybody. Good to see you. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the last one. Come on, everybody.